Hello, this is Victor and here with a new paint and talk. And this is coming, uh, yeah, just because I was thinking, why well, came the question to me, and is, is Gates Workshop saturating the market? It's Gates Workshop, um, I don't know, making difficult the life to other small companies. And I think that, I see that because Games Workshop is launching so many products, so many miniatures that you can just, yeah, the, uh, first you cannot follow up on most of the people, unless you have a lot of money and time, cannot follow up all the launches done by Games Workshop, especially if you play more than one game. So, and now, and now on top, he's touching a, a, big, a lot of different aspects Okay, for a while, Games Workshop was focused on Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k, so it was more focused on the big army games. But today, Games Workshop have a big variety of games and they are supporting all these games in different levels, right? So I know you can see here I'm painting Necromunda, maybe it's not one of the most supported ones, but Games Workshop now have, um, of course they have uh, supporting very strongly 40k and Age of Sigmar, we have Shade Spire, uh, we have um, Necromunda, but we have as well Kill Team. Kill Team is evolving a lot, so Games Workshop is jumping a lot into the uh, skirmish games, on, into the uh, low miniature ga and count mm, uh, games, right? The, the games with uh, a small number of miniatures. And this normally was a spaces for other companies. But now I'm thinking if it's Games Workshop now with all this uh, really trying to saturate the market, trying to to make the life difficult to other companies and trying maybe to eliminate some competition. It's just a question that comes to my mind because really uh, yeah they are putting out there a lot of different options, they are supporting them very strongly and yeah you know that uh, so far they are uh, the, the, most of the games have more or less support. Uh, Necromoon they have support and then they have all these board games I will call them or one one uh, launch games right games that are launched just once like Speed Freaks then we have as well the dungeon calling games and I know they used to do that in the past in the 90s 80s and they create this market in a way right Games Workshop have created this market uh, of war gaming of miniature gaming uh, but it looks like that no, they are right. Uh, they are like re it's like a rebirth, right? A, a new birth of the of of the company, especially with the new CEO and how it's approaching no uh, everything, and they are putting resources on tournaments. They are putting resources on, and they are yeah. Shade Spy is quite nicely supported as well. Although um, some people can think it's a flanker game, I think it's very well supported with these four war bands and. The other thing is, he's, they are covering uh, different types of gamers and different types of badges, right? If you like um, Shade Spire, you don't need to invest that much compared to what you need to invest if you play Age of Sigmar. Uh, uh, but then you have, uh, for 40k, you have Kill Team, so you can play uh, just with your Warband and just with a small uh, or limited investment, or you can go to 40k and go for a bigger investment. Or you can, yeah, like me, that we collect different games and different seasons at the same time. And then uh, it starts to be a little bit crazy to follow, right? So this is a question for you. What do you think? Uh, do you think this is good or bad for other companies? Is, are, are the other companies maybe suffering? I, I have not seen the figures, but maybe I need to investigate that. But oh, they are growing the market. Another thing uh, that... It seems that it's working very well in Spain, and I guess as well in the in the countries where in, in the English-speaking countries. I mean, in the UK and and US is the Warhammer uh, Conquest. Okay, uh, is this really Warhammer Conquest increasing the base of players? Because at the end, Games Workshop will need to increase the base of players if they want to keep this rhythm of launches, right? So, because one, once the players have, if you only this in kill team, once you have your kill team warband, of course you will go for your second and then you will go for your third. 
but you would like to increase the base of players. And then it comes to my uh, other question: Are they will relaunch uh, new editions for all these games uh, in a regular basis? I mean, we are going to have an Age of Sigmar every two three years. Uh, are we going to have? a new 40k as well every 2-3 years we, we are going to have a shade spire, a new shade spire kit uh, every year so it is quite, uh, I'm quite curious to see how all this evolve and if Games Workshop will keep this rhythm it seems that the numbers uh, are showing that uh, if you look at the finance numbers of Games Workshop Games Workshop have growth a lot in terms of uh, sales right on organic growth they have grow a lot on organic uh, on organic growth so they are really uh, um, making a very interesting number numbers that are appealing to investors and the yeah it is why they as well the shares have go up so but then I come back to my question uh, is there still flow of people to other games? Or really, uh, Games Workshop is uh, now saturated in the market with so many options that uh, yeah, it's difficult for the people, for the followers to jump to other companies. And I make this question because well, when they were used to launch uh, one codex every three months, for example, yeah, when you get bored of, of oh, well, there was uh, some codex that you were not interested too much or armies. Then I was jumping to the competition and see what other companies uh, were doing and trying to find um, bids for conversions on, on all these type of things. But today, yeah, they put so much material and they put so much so continuously that you don't need to wait that long to have, find another thing that is appealing to you, right? And they they put all these like these small launches or these small surprise meters like the female commissar or Eisenhorn or they, they, all these things are very interesting because they uh, they create these special uh, units and on top they have their own rules to be able to be played in the game so yeah it's uh, I, I think the yeah I would like to know what is your point of view uh, I think this can be yeah uh, this can be difficult for other companies to compete against Games Workshop, especially no. Uh, I remember that some com some people were thinking that Games Workshop would disappear. Uh, they were doing, to be fair, they were not doing well um, three years, four years ago. And some people were thinking that they will disappear. But today, they are very strong. They are growing. I think they are also growing the community. There are some more and more people know about Warhammer. But... I don't know if at the same time they're making the life difficult to other companies because it's not easy to compete with a company that is putting news every week on the market. So that was just a, uh, a thinking and now I'm looking forward to see your comments and to understand and to know what do you think. Uh, do you think uh, I'm glad, I'm very happy with the rhythm of miniatures and all this news. Uh, no, we have to be very selective on what we buy, right? We don't have time. and uh, We don't have time and we don't have money to paint all what they launch. But uh, yeah, it, and each time I see something, it's appealing to me. So uh, I like a lot the Genestealer cult. I like a lot uh, the, the goblins. Uh, um, yeah, I cannot do both armies at the same time. And I, I don't think I will go into... Maybe if in the future I will go to the Genestealer cult. Uh, to increase my army but one thing the other thing I'm realizing is mm, I have to be more and more choiceful uh, I have some small armies and maybe it's a good thing to keep them small to play them in a, a small scale games right to use them for kill team or to use to use them on lower point games and other armies you invest more and you do both them for a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, games or something like that. So yeah, this is another reflection. So I don't need to or don't try to grow all the armies to the same level. Maybe this is another uh, lesson I have to learn to myself, right? And that's all. That's all what I want to talk here. So now looking forward to see your opinions. 
is Games Workshop uh, saturating the market? Uh, are you happy with the, the rhythm of Games Workshop or you think it's too fast or too slow? I don't think no, I, I don't I guess nobody will say too slow. And it, it has changed the way how you see the launches now from Games Workshop. Um, are you trying to be more selective on what you buy, on what you paint? So these are questions for you, I'm looking forward to know. Uh, I think it's workshop in a way saturating a little bit the market. It's touching uh, several ways to play and it's not leaving too, many, too much room uh, to other companies sometimes. Maybe big companies that private press, um, weird games, they will not have that many problems, especially with that have a very different game system and also... But, yeah, they're also attacking the Privateer uh, Press um, region, that is because they were more focused on the competitive part. And now Games Workshop is really pushing the competitive part as well. In, in the Games Workshop style, that is different, but they're also pushing this quite a lot. Okay, and then, yeah, uh, I ha on the terms of... Uh, I think uh, yeah, I'm glad to see this moment of the hobby where we have so much news and so much new things uh, every day. Sometimes it's difficult for me to be up to speed in all the new rules, in all the news, to know everything. So it's it's not easy for me to to be up to speed in all the games that I try to be. So I'm trying to be more selective in what games I need to be more up to speed and I give up on other games. And yeah, and also on, on the ways, uh, on the miniature purchases and trying to be more and more selective every day. I have too many miniatures to paint in my in my collection. But of course, I keep making mistakes and I keep buying more miniatures than what I can paint. And that's all, that's all what I want to talk here. Now looking forward to know your opinions as usual. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!